One of my best friends loves making jokes about herself. For as long as I can remember, she has always managed to diffuse awkward or tense situations by making fun of her mishaps and her shortcomings. As strange as this might sound, many of us are happier when we can laugh at our past mistakes and misfortunes and turn them into amusement for others. Emotional intelligence, or EQ, has been deemed a more powerful predictor of a person's success than his or her intelligence or IQ. The reason boils down to the simple fact that human relationships are at the core of any business. Being able to better understand, connect, empathize, and negotiate with others is crucial in our personal and financial success. Investing in your own EQ is an investment in yourself as a person, leader, an entrepreneur. In order to really understand what goes into EQ, it's easiest to break it down into traits that we can easily recognize. Best-selling author and science journalist Daniel Goleman simplified EQ using a model comprised of five different factors. Number one, self-awareness, the ability to know one's emotions, strengths, and weaknesses. Number two, self-regulation, the ability to control one's emotions and impulses. Number three, social skill. The ability to manage relationships such that it moves people in the desired direction. Number four, empathy. The ability to consider other people's feelings, especially when making decisions. Number five, motivation. The tendency to be driven to achieve for the sake of achievement. Of these five factors, self-awareness is the one that is exhibited by some of the most likable and powerful people. Self-awareness is the ability to understand one's own emotions and its effect on others. A Harvard Business Review study revealed that self-aware leaders are confident and often candid. They have a holistic and honest understanding of both their strengths and weaknesses. Research suggests that a tangible way to spot a self-aware leader is by looking for a self-deprecating sense of humor. People that can admit to their failures or shortcomings with a smile tend to be more approachable and real. Some may think that admitting to failures or faults reveals vulnerability, but in reality, the best entrepreneurs must constantly judge their own capabilities, as well as those of others. They need to understand when they need to help others out and proactively surround themselves with people that excel where they fall short. Being so comfortable and confident that you can laugh at yourself builds trust within your team. Leaders with this ideal combination of confidence and self-awareness bond more tightly with teammates by de-emphasizing the differences in status between themselves, their employees, and their customers. If trust and transparency are important components of your relationship with your team and buyers, then exposing some imperfections can be a great way to open up. This, of course, does not mean that you should spend your time dragging your accomplishments in the dirt and highlighting only your shortcomings. It also doesn't mean you should make light of any serious situation or failure. It does, however, mean that you should make a more conscious effort to humanize yourself to your team by openly accepting your shortcomings. If an elevated EQ wasn't enough, new studies have shown that a self-deprecating sense of humor actually promotes psychological well-being. While this might seem far-fetched at first glance, it actually makes a lot of sense. Perfection is an impossible persona to maintain. Failure can flood you with anxiety, especially related to social acceptance. Taking the first jab at yourself when you stumble, rather than through the feedback of others, alleviates that pressure somewhat. They may be laughing at you, but at least you made the joke. People that are too focused on their polished image often waste hours fixated on the wrong things. In his novel The East of Eden, John Steinbeck writes, And now that you don't have to be perfect, you can be good. This quote has always resonated with me since it describes the dangers that come with striving for perfection, that it impedes your ability to provide a truly value-adding service to your colleagues and customers. Laughing at your imperfection allows you to recognize them, accept them, and move along. 
In particular, we have observed that a greater tendency to employ self-defeating humor is indicative of high scores in psychological well-being dimensions such as happiness and to a lesser extent, sociability, says Jorge Torres Marin, co-author and researcher on the study of humor and well-being. Working with individuals with a high EQ can result in an immediate positive impact on any team. Testing for EQ entails more than quizzing for raw intelligence. Candidates shouldn't be expected to display a self-deprecating sense of humor during the interview process, but you can spot signs of them of being self-aware. These individuals are able to own up to their past experiences, both their successes and shortcomings, in a concise, non-defensive manner. Ask them about their biggest mistake, and don't accept any humble brags. Press them on a time when emotions got in the way. Can they admit to imperfection? Emotional intelligence is one of the most powerful barometers for success, and being self-aware is a necessary trait. Your ability to laugh at yourself may not only help you become more successful in your personal and your business life, but it may also alleviate some of the anxiety that comes with chasing unattainable perfection. Psychologist Dr. Arnie Kahn, who has studied self-deprecating humor, believes that by having self-awareness, we can drastically improve our lives. If you're looking for more reasons to break those awkward silences with harmless self-jab, consider these five benefits of taking yourself less seriously. Number one, you'll build more positive relationships. Number two, you'll be better able to reframe challenges. Number three, it will help you cultivate creative thinking and problem-solving skills. Number four, it's a great tool to combat potential stress. Number five, you'll foster better self-compassion. Ultimately, self-mockery should be a way of acknowledging our flaws and limitations through the softer lens of self-compassion. The act of poking fun at ourselves is admitting that we're imperfect humans. But it's only when we can recognize our own infallibility with kindness and grace that we're more able to view those around us in the same way. In forgiving all of our awkward mishaps, we make room so that others can as well. We hope that you found this video useful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe. We really appreciate your support. Also, follow us on our social media and visit our website at thetopessentials.com to learn more about how you can live your best life. See you soon.